It's not that I'm flexing, but I just finished playing with all the camera modules I've got to make this video. So uh, let's clean this up and start the video. Hey guys, I didn't expect anything from Raspberry Pi Foundation this year, at least not this early in the year, and there we have it, a surprise. I have two camera modules V3 out of four possible variants. There is a wide lens and just a standard lens, and each one of them comes with also no infrared filter if that's what you're into. From the physical standpoint, not much has changed. It's still the same form factor, however this time we have a bigger camera lens. Now this is because apart from having a better sensor, we also have a lens equipped with autofocus. It's one of the two main features of the V3 series. Obviously there is a lot to talk about starting with the new sensor inside, which is again from Sony and this time it is IMX477, a 11.9 megapixel sensor which comes really really close in terms of pixel count uh, to the HQ, so high quality camera module released some time ago. And the lens is using phase shift focus, something that is available either on your phones or some of the DSLR uh, cameras. Which means that these camera modules aim to close the performance gap between the older version, which was 2.1, and the high quality camera module, which was quite a bit expensive. And speaking of price, I got the standard version for £25 and the white lens version is slightly more expensive at £35. It's not just the photography that got a boost because the sensor is capable of pretty impressive video quality too. This time around we can record images in 1080p and 60 frames per second and if you're willing to sacrifice the frame rate you can capture videos at about 15 frames per second using the maximum resolution of the image including HDR. Previously I used HQ camera modules to capture brilliant time lapses when 3D printing. I've got video dedicated to that. So super curious to see what can I achieve with the latest modules. And as it happened I have more than one camera module at my disposal so I decided to uh, take a couple of pictures and run some videos to kind of get a sense of how this new module will perform. But first, we need to assemble my photo studio. Uh, okay, it's a pretty big, big name for a piece of wood on the desk, but uh, yeah, we're gonna do that. Now, I remember some time ago, I got Arducam, which was 16 megapixel autofocus camera. We're gonna compare to that as well. Uh, but that come with a really nice small box uh, it, to which I could uh, screw in the camera module um, and use that with a triplet accessories. And I have a whole bag of them which were very useful to create a mini triplet and attach that to my motorized slider for a consistent performance. It's my first time with lip camera too, so I wasn't exactly sure how difficult it's gonna be to set everything up and start taking pictures or shooting videos. It turns out it's pretty easy. All I had to do is just to update my Raspberry Pi OS and then just connect my camera to the Raspberry Pi and reboot. That accessibility is the biggest advantage of using Raspberry Pi product because they're always well documented and always gives you a lot to work with. For my camera setup, I actually use the VNC to, well, remote desktop into Raspberry Pi, a desktop environment, and then executed stuff from the console. So if you want to follow my steps and try out the camera, check out the article linked in the description. That article will also contain all the sample pictures that I've taken for this particular video. Once I had everything connected, I set up a scene and took my first picture. Then I promptly downloaded the picture and cast it on my 4K display just to kind of have a impression of what I'm dealing with. And to be honest, I was blown away because that little thing is capable of taking equally good pictures to my 700 pound mobile phone, which is very famous for a good camera. 
Hello Xiaomi, you're being overplayed by this little thing. Granted, I was using ultrawide on both cameras just to give it a fair shot. So with that teaser in mind, I started to take pictures and videos from the beginning, which means I had to dig out the first camera module, the V1.3. And there, where I discovered my lens actually was scratched and produced milky images. And I thought I'm gonna be skipping this part, however, promptly reminded myself that I have another one of those on the robot, so, well, robot needed to be dismantled. To be fair, even though that original module isn't really available for sale anymore, it still takes a pretty decent picture. There is no autofocus and you only have 5 mega uh, pixel to, to play with, but the results are pretty good. Moving to the next camera module, it was time for the camera module V2.1. That's the 8 megapixel camera module, which I've tried next. It also has a fixed lens, so I took a snap. And that looked decent. Not as good as the picture taken with the new cameras, but you're definitely not going to complain about the quality as long as you're going to set your focus just right. Building the anticipation even further, it was time to switch over to high quality camera modules with two lenses that I've got. One is the CCTV lens and one is the zoom lens. It took me a while to actually get everything screwed in properly and set the lenses at correct distances so it would produce a sharp images, but these are the results, starting with the CCTV lens, which gives you a little bit wider shot. Then following by a fairly zoomed in shot, just to give you an idea how much of a crop you're going to get. So far, all pictures have been taken from this very same spot, so it gives you an idea of what you're dealing with and how much of a view in front of the module you're gonna actually get in your pictures. All right, it's time to actually go and test the V3, and we're gonna start with wide lens. Picture looks like this. Remember when I said it kind of looks like the pictures taken from my mobile phone? Well, I took a picture from my mobile phone just for reference. Switching over to the standard lens and I got a picture like this. And I got tempted as well and decided to take a snap with my very expensive mobile. And I have to say, there isn't that much of a difference, especially when you're looking at it on a small screen. So overall, the pictures look fantastic, but the biggest advantage is that you no longer have to play with manual focus. Manual focus might be good for certain things, but if you have ability to either autofocus or set the focus via software, that gives you an edge because you no longer have to control the camera in a physical way to get the pictures you want. For the next couple of pictures, I was really just experimenting with autofocus, trying to get a feel how easy it is to control and acquire a sharp image. And the experience was pretty positive because, again, Raspberry Pi documentation is spotless on that, and uh, it's just so much easier to follow the guides online and start taking pictures you want. Do you remember that Arducam 16 megapixel with autofocus I mentioned? Well, it's time to connect it to Raspberry Pi. And I have a confession to make. Remember when I said that Raspberry Pi camera modules were super easy to install and start shooting? Well, that wasn't exactly true with Arducam. When initially Arducam camera was released, it was well priced, it was only $25, and it offered a decent uh, pixel count with autofocus. However, what was breaking for me that on a launch day the documentation was lacking and I quickly got this interested because I couldn't make it work properly because there was always something annoying about it, always something didn't work. But some time has passed since the launch day and there is actually a little bit better documentation of what you're supposed to do with the camera to make it work. So let's compare the pictures taken with the standard lens from the uh, camera module V3 and the Arducam. Now, back in then, if they managed to get the documentation right, that was a very tempting module to get started with everything, but right now, knowing that the Raspberry Pi camera is in a very similar price, it's a very hard choice, and anyone just getting started would be probably encouraged to use the Raspberry Pi camera, mostly for the accessibility reasons. But it's not just pictures, right? We can also take really nice videos. So I have a motorized slider deployed. Let's take advantage of that. 
And instead of introducing the contenders again, let's just roll with the showreel. One of the use cases for the camera module, at least here for me, is to run it with Octoprint. And I've used high quality camera in the past to take beautiful time lapses, so I was really eager to try these ones, the V3 as well. Unfortunately, I have some bad news. Right now, these aren't supported in Octoprint. It's because they use Leap Camera module and Octoprint is running Buster. Now, you can get it to work, but the whole thing is slightly complex and outside of this video scope. Now, I might have a follow-up video on that subject specifically, but that's gonna probably be later on. Another thing to consider before you get one of these for your Octoprint is the fact that you're not going to really take advantage of the full resolution of the sensor. Octoprint is limited at the moment for external cameras to 1080p footage and the same goes for octolapse and time lapses. So if you want to take advantage of increased resolution to provide really clear and beautiful shots, you'll have to write the script yourself and then link it to your octolapse. But instead of leaving you disappointed, I decided to connect them to another Raspberry Pi and fill my printer in progress anyway, so you could have an idea what sort of camera quality and what sort of angles you would expect if you're using Camera Module V3 for your Octoprint setup. So it seems that the Raspberry Pi has a camera module for every situation from inexpensive 1.3 modules that you can use in pretty much every situation to high quality stuff from high quality camera with uh, dedicated lenses and now small boards that close performance and offer autofocus. So if you're interested in my Octoprint development with these then you know how YouTube works but in the comments do let me know what would you do with the camera modules and how would you take advantage of the autofocus because I'm also interested in that. As for now, I do not have a posting schedule, you know how everything works, how to subscribe and so on. So if you want to ask me any questions about these modules, follow me on social media and start the conversation. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.